Hi everyone, let's talk about the extended Euclidean algorithm. What the extended Euclidean algorithm is all about is finding Bezu coefficients. So remember Bezu's lemma. It says that if a and b are integers such that a square plus b square is not equal to zero, which essentially means that at least one of them is non-zero, then there exists x and y in the integers such that this equation holds. So ax plus by equals to gcd of a and b. Now these x and y might be implicit. So they just exist. Um, we don't know what they are and it just might be handy to have this this equation without knowing what x and y are. But there are cases in which we want it to be explicit. And this, this actually falls into the theory of linear Diophantine equations where we want to solve for x and y. And what we're going to be doing here is that we're going to be explicitly solving for just one value of the coordinates x, y. That is related to the Euclidean algorithm because we can use the sequence of quotients and remainders that come up in the Euclidean algorithm to actually find x and y. So here, here's what we'll do. We have a sequence of Euclidean divisions and they look like this. We Let's say a is greater than or equal to b just, just so that uh, we're starting off on the right foot. So we have a equals to q naught, a, a quotient, times b plus r naught, the first remainder, or the zeroth remainder. And zero is less than or equal to r naught, and r naught is less than b, since b is a divisor. Then we get b is equal to q1 r naught plus r1, and we get 0 is less than or equal to r1 and less than the previous remainder r0. Then we, then we do r0 is equal to q2, another quotient, r1, the divisor, the new divisor, plus r2, the new remainder, and we have r2 is less than r1. Let's do one more. We get r1 is equal to q3 r2 plus r3 and we have r3 is greater than or equal to 0 and less than r2 and we keep going like that until we find that rn minus 3 is equal to qn minus 1 and you'll see what capital N is in just a moment R n minus 2 plus r n minus 1 and we have 0 is less than or equal to the remainder r n minus 1 is less than the divisor r n minus 2 and the last step we have r n minus 2 is equal to q n r n minus 1 plus rn and what we have in this case this is very special we have 0 is equal to rn so rn is equal to 0 um, so there's a question of whether this will actually happen and, and the truth is yes it will happen because notice that b is greater than r0 and r0 is greater than r1 and r1 is greater than r2 and r2 is greater than r3 and we just keep going like that until we have it's greater than rn minus 1 and finally we get rn is this is greater than rn which is equal to 0 and th this has to happen because we have a strictly decreasing cis sequence of remainders and the remainders are all greater than or equal to zero so sooner or later you have to hit rock bottom which is zero
Now, why, why is this useful? This is useful because we can use these quotients. So there are n plus 1 quotients, q0 through qn, and we can use these remainders as well. So take note of these quotients and remainders, and I'm going to be pulling a bit of a rabbit out of a hat here, but what holds is, and we can prove this by strong uh, by just regular induction, um, that if we let q naught one one zero times q one 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 zero all the way through to qn one one zero, if we let that product be equal to alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, then what we find is that alpha, beta, gamma, delta is equal times, sorry, we have to multiply by the last non-zero remainder, which is rn minus 1, 0. So it's a, it's a column vector. This is equal to a, b. And you can see how this is going to be useful because we just have to multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix. And once we do that, we can we know we know what a is we know what b is we know what we want to know what this is since this is equal to g c d a and b according to the euclidean algorithm so this is very useful and we can prove this by induction just what you should do is sorry you can prove not not the, uh, this is just a def the one above is just a definition. We can prove this by induction. And the way we do that is that we multiply this column vector by this, and then we keep left multiplying them by this and by this and so on, and we find that in the end, by the definition of the Euclidean algorithm, all these equations, you can use them. I'm not going to show them right now, how they're used. But by the definition of matrix multiplication, after you multiply all of them on the left, you get this. Okay, so we're just going to assume the this over here using this definition. And what we find is that if we take the determinant of both sides of this, we get alpha, delta, minus, beta, gamma is equal to the determ by the multiplicativity of the determinant, it's the determinant of this times the determinant of this all the way through the determinant of this. But each, but each of those determinants is just negative 1. And there's n plus 1 matrices, so it's negative 1 to the n plus 1. And this is really important because this allows us to compute the inverse of alpha, beta, gamma, delta is equal to delta, negative, beta, negative, gamma, negative, delta. You, you can check that this, uh, oh, this is times negative 1 to the n plus 1. You can check that these two matrices multiplied together do give the identity matrix which is 1 0 0 1 so uh, what that tells us then is that we can take this equation multiply both sides by this inverse and we get that r n minus 1 0 is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1 times delta negative beta negative gamma this should be an alpha alpha times a b and that is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1 times delta a minus beta b 
and the lower entry which doesn't really matter but we'll compute it anyway it's negative gamma a plus alpha b and so what that means is that rn minus 1 is equal to this times this so therefore gcd of a and b is equal to rn minus 1 which is equal to negative 1 to the n plus 1 delta times a plus negative 1 to the n because there's a negative here and, and a negative here beta times b and so this is equal to x and this is equal to y now the last thing that I want to say is that usually there's a sequence of substitutions into equations that is used to find the, these Bayesian coefficients x and y but I find that this method of using matrices is more precise and um, it's just easier to remember as well. It's, it's a very straightforward computation as opposed to a bunch of substitutions into equations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.